The Kenyan government under President William Ruto has once again registered its disappointment with the ongoing military takeovers on the African continent, especially in the Francophone West Africa where they have lately been rampant and slammed the Russian President Vladimir Putin for what it says supporting and endorsing coup plotters. In a statement shared by the Kenyan Foreign Affairs Ministry on August 1, 2023, the East African country reiterated its position of disapproving military intervention in civilian affairs, noting that the situation is being exacerbated by global leaders like Vladimir Putin who have been abetting and endorsing the activities of coup leaders. The foreign ministry was reacting to a warm reception that the Burkina Faso transitional president Captain Ibrahim Traoré received from Vladimir Putin in Russia as he joined other African heads of state for the second Russia-Africa summit that was held between July 27 to July 28, 2023. That, such actions by Putin would create wrong precedents for future generations, who may be tempted to think that military coups are a better option for their countries. The Kenyan leadership argued that the Russian President Vladimir Putin's decision to invite coup leaders like Captain Traoré and his Malian counterpart to the summit, appears to encourage such military takeovers yet they go against the tenets of democracy. Part of that statement from the Foreign Affairs Ministry read that, the normalization and dignifying of military takeovers must trouble our great continent. It is a major rollback to the democratic gains so far made. The sentiments kind of echoed President William Ruto's remarks on the coup in Niger in which he condemned the same saying that it is a major role back to the democratic gains so far made on the African continent. On Wednesday, Africa suffered a serious setback in its democratic gains as the aspirations of the people of Niger for constitutional democracy were subverted by an unconstitutional change of government that deposed Mohamed Bazoum, a democratically elected president. The Republic of Kenya joins the rest of the world to condemn in the strongest terms this unconstitutional act that subverts democracy through a coup d'etat and calls for the immediate release of President Mohamed Bazoum, who is reportedly seized by members of the Presidential Guard. Throughout our continent's history, we have strived tirelessly to nurture the principles of democracy, aligning ourselves with the aspirations of the African people for freedom and self-determination. This fundamental norm is crystallized in Article 4P of the Constitutive Act of the African Union, which unequivocally condemns and rejects any unconstitutional change of government. The government and the people of Kenya earnestly urge all parties involved to refrain from further escalation that might jeopardize the lives and livelihoods of the people of Niger. We call for the swift restoration of constitutional rule, ensuring the protection of the population and a return to full civilian authority while upholding utmost respect for the country's institutions. In this moment of strife, we implore all parties to engage in constructive discourse to restore peace in this fraternal nation, which has steadfastly stood as a bulwark against terrorism and its agents in the Sahel region. The resurgence of military coups and attempts to subvert the will of the people on our beloved continent demands a united and global response to hold those responsible accountable for their actions. Let us stand together as one to reaffirm our commitment to democracy, liberty, and the progress we have achieved. We must remain vigilant, guarding against any slide back into dark days that threaten the hard-fought gains in democracy. Kenya is willing to assist in resolving the conflict under the auspices of the African Union should it be deemed appropriate. Africa shall continue to shine as a beacon of hope and progress, and we shall never waver in our pursuit of a brighter future for all. May peace and prosperity prevail across our great continent and beyond. Thank you, and God bless Africa. Then in addition to ECOWAS leaders who have strongly condemned the Niger coup, 
The South Sudanese president Salva Kiir has also been the latest to condemn the latest wave of military takeovers on the continent. In his speech on South Sudan's Martyrs' Day, Salva Kiir called for a strengthening of democracy in Africa instead of praising of military coups and perpetual transitional governments. He said that, I know there are voices that question our resolve to hold elections, but to those voices, I say that for the good of our country just like any other country, we must work to exit from perpetual transitional government status and elections are the only way out of this. In West Africa, there have been more than five coups just within a span of four years, touching on countries like Guinea, Burkina Faso, Mali, Chad and now Niger. Captain Traoré led a coup against a sitting president Paul Henry de Miba, who was legitimately elected by the people through a democratic process. Meanwhile, the Niger coup saw the presidential guards detain President Mohamed Bazoum on in late July and declare the government dissolved. The chief of the presidential guard, that is General Abdurrahman Chiani was then named as president of the National Council for the Safeguard of the Homeland. Despite warnings from ECOWAS for Niger coup plotters to cede power within 15 days and return to democratic processes or be met with force, coup leaders in Burkina Faso, Mali and Guinea have shown their support for their counterparts in Niger, thereby defying ECOWAS sanctions. In particular, the Guinea, Burkina Faso and Mali leaders warned that military interventions in Niger will be considered as an act of war against them and they will equally respond accordingly. If this coup is successful, Niger will join the club of suspended ECOWAS members. Amid these developments, Niger has suspended the export of gold and uranium to France after France suspended aid to Niger in its reaction to the coup. It's reported that one out of every three light bulbs in France is powered with uranium from Niger since uranium from Niger is used to generate nuclear energy in the European country. However, only 18% of Niger's citizens have access to electricity, making the country one of the poorest on the continent. It's for this reason that Ibrahim Traoré paused the big question at the Russia-Africa summit that, how comes Africa is rich in resources but never progresses? He then challenged Africans who are yoked under imperialism and neocolonialism, courtesy of puppet heads of state to break the chains and unleash their country's potentials. That, in any case, a slave who does not rebel does not deserve pity and the African Union must stop condemning Africans who fight against their own puppet regimes of the West. Then, these West African coups have largely been blamed on Russia, since it's reported that through the PMC Wagner mercenaries, which have a huge presence in countries like Mali, Burkina Faso and Central Africa Republic, Russia has been exploiting conflicts in these countries to illegally exploit their natural resources like gold. In late July 2023 and just after the coup being reported in Niger, hundreds of Wagner instructors and fighters were deployed to work in the Central Africa Republic, where they are normally involved in security restoration and training of local security forces. Anyway, the Kenyan government's stand on the matter has been met with mixed reactions as many people warn that the coups are as a result of unpredictable electoral systems which often culminate in disputed elections. Whom do you support between William Ruto, or rather those condemning the coups and Vladimir Putin, or rather those African military men that are turning the tide in the Sahel? Leave your comment below and don't forget to subscribe before leaving. If you are one head of state and you want to engage all these people, Surely, are you sincere, you know, in, in engaging in a crowd? You, because some of these uh, good people, they want to avoid any commitments, you know. They, they want to av avoid any meaningful engagement. They just want a baraza and uh, okay, okay, pictures, pictures, and then we go. Dinner, and then... I mean, good people, we have food in our countries, at least. We can eat at home. <laughs>